Have you ever been told you can't do that and wondered why not? And when you ask people, everyone says that's just not possible. Well, today we're going to talk about something that I was repeatedly told is not possible. That's how do you upgrade a system under the feed-in tariff here in the UK. Now, this video should be entitled, Do What You Can't. Now, actually, this is a title that I've stolen from the uh, YouTube celebrity, Casey Neistat. Now, if you've seen any of Casey's videos, you'll know he's a brilliant storyteller. But one video in particular that he made a few years ago now really stuck with me, and it was entitled, Do What You Can't. I'm going to put a link to the, in the description to that video. It's worth watching just for the, the great storytelling that Casey does. But this is going to be the theme for today, doing what you can't. So back in the spring of 2024, I was in a bit of a situation with my solar systems. We had two completely separate systems. We had a 2.1 kilowatt system that was on our south by southwest facing roof. Um, that was a 2.1 kilowatt solar edge inverter and 10 200 watt panels on the roof. And this had been there for the best part of 14 years. We installed it back in 2010 and it was covered under what is known as the feed-in tariff. We also, at the same time, had a completely separate system that was a five kilowatt system with nearly 20 kilowatts of battery storage and a 3.6 kilowatt inverter in my garage. And neither of these systems were performing the way I wanted them to perform. Now I've talked many times about why the mistake that I made with the 3.6 kilowatt inverter, I'm not gonna go back over that today. But I wanna focus on what I planned to do and all the bad advice that I was given. The main reason that I wanted to upgrade these systems is it was a nightmare to manage. SolarEdge had introduced uh, battery management to allow the end user to manage their batteries, but not if you had more than one inverter. And I believe still today, if you have multiple inverters, you still can't manage your own batteries. So I decided that I wanted to be in control. I didn't want my installer or solar edge or others having the controls to my system and not letting me manage my own systems. So I set about planning to resolve this by consolidating my systems into one large system. I wanted to have one inverter with all of the panels connected and I wanted to have all of the batteries connected to that one inverter. You can't upgrade a fit system is what everybody told me. It's just not possible. If you try and upgrade a FIT system, you will lose all of your payments. If you do this, you will lose your FIT payments completely. This turned out to be terrible advice because I spent months trying to figure out if this was true. There was not a huge amount of documentation around and everybody I spoke to gave me different advice. So before we go any further, for those that have come to solar recently, let me briefly explain what the feed-in tariff is. The feed-in tariff was something that the government brought in to incentivize and drive the adoption of solar back in the mid 2000s, uh, I think going all the way up to about 2016. Now the way this worked was you purchased a solar system, um, there were no, no special rates, there was no discounts or anything like that, you bought it up front, but the government would guarantee to buy that energy uh, or, or credit you for the energy you produced uh, for that system. And, and basically over the next 25 years to offset the cost of that solar system. Because back in 2010, my two kilowatt solar system cost nearly 15,000 pounds. Now, the feed-in tariff turned out to be way too good to be true because everyone that signed up for it uh, was immediately put onto a contract for 25 years. The payments you received were index linked, so they go up every single year, and it turned out to be way too good to be true. So the government closed the scheme, I believe in about 2016, but I, I may have my date slightly wrong, but you can't get the feed-in tariff any longer. Those that are on the system, want to protect it because as you say, it is it is really good. Uh, currently being paid about 70 pence per kilowatt hour that you generate. Now, the downside of this is you can't upgrade it. You can't change the panels, you can't change the inverter, um, and everybody you speak to has different advice on this. 
ultimately what we were being told was changes equals decommissioning. If you make changes to the system, you will lose all your payments. So quite rightfully, people who were looking at possibly losing 20 years or more of payments decided, I'm not touching it. It's gonna to continue to run, I will just let it go, and I will continue to cash the checks. But as I said at the beginning, that's not the way I work. Um, th that video that I talked about from Casey Neistat had an impact on me when I saw it a few years ago, and it probably made me a little bit more belligerent. It made me challenge when I'm told something, you can't do this. I will go and investigate it, and if I can find a way to do it, I will do it. So I started to make calls. I started with my fit provider, a company called Ecotricity. I then called my DNO. I then called Ofgem. I even wrote to the Department of Energy. Um, never got a reply, but I wrote to the Department of Energy and copied the minister. And nobody replied. Nobody could give me a simple answer that yes, you can do this, or no, you can't, or there's a gray area in the middle. And then I found a document on the Ofgem website. And that document really cleared everything up for me. And it said, and I've, I've taken one paragraph out of the document, I will link the document in the description below. But Typical legalese type document here. But a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So you can do upgrades, so long as you don't exceed five megawatts for a domestic install. I don't know any domestic installs that are approaching five megawatts. Um, the micro CHP is combined heat, so it's uh, for people that have, are on the heat incentive as well. The extensions have to be accredited, and we'll come back to that in a moment. And you can't receive payments for increased capacity. So basically, for the two kilowatts that I had under the FIT scheme, the new system, I can only be paid for two kilowatts of that. And the way it works is the payments, for a, if you increase the size of the system, they will be prorated accordingly. So what does that actually mean? Well, here's an example. So if we had an old system where we had five 200 watt panels, uh, we'd have a kilowatt uh, on the roof under the fit scheme. In the new world, when we've, we've basically taken that down and we've installed a complete new system, we might have 15 400 watt panels, but only one kilowatt of that is eligible to be paid under the fit scheme. So really what you're gonna get is 16.5% of your total install capacity will be paid under fit. If you're gonna upgrade your system, you can change the inverter, you can change the panels, you can even add battery storage. Now the first step here is you need to seek pre-approval. So I reached out to Ecotricity, um, they're my fit provider, they have a team called the Microtricity team, the micro generation team, and I said, this is what I wanna do, here is the relevant off-gem documentation, and I'd like your pre-approval to move forward. And, they were great. They were fantastic. They said, yeah, thank you very much for your email. Yes, absolutely, you can do this. They made me aware that I wouldn't get paid on any extra capacity or anything like that, but I had the pre-approval in place. I then started talking to my installer and they were very wary. They were like, oh no, 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 you can't do this. You, you, you can't, don't touch the FIT system. You will lose your payments. And I showed them all the documentation and they were still very, very worried. And basically I had to indemnify them that I was taking full responsibility for this and I wouldn't come back to them later if my fit got decommissioned, um, I lost out on any money like that. So we went back and forth for a number of different emails and I signed a few bits of paper to say, go ahead, this is what I want you to do, I'm giving you my approval and I won't seek redress at some point in the future. I then had to provide evidence to Microtricity. So I had to take a photograph of my meter, my generation meter on the day it was decommissioned of the old system. And I had to send a photo of the new generation meter um, that was put in with the new system. Now, the one thing I would highly recommend anyone that is doing this, yes, you can use the same generation meter. Don't do it. Put a brand new meter in, have it set to zero, or in this case, it was set to, uh, by the time we got to take the photograph, it was five kilowatts. but zero everything, new meter, new serial number, and then that will get updated in the FIT database. You then need to provide your MCS certificate once the installation is complete. 
So this precludes, if you've got a system and you're planning to do all the upgrades yourself, you won't be able to get your FIT payment uh, reinstated. You do need an MCS certificate for the installation work. And it needs to cover the whole new system, not just the part you've changed. Many months later. I received this email. So Brennan, we started this process back in end of February, beginning of March. And then finally, on the 16th of October, I got the email that I was waiting for saying, it's all approved, it's all done, you're ready to go on the new system, and we will send you a note in a few months' time asking you to give us a meter reading. And that's exactly what I did. And a couple of days ago, I received this statement saying um, that they were going to pay me £650.49 pence for my generation between uh, the 26th of August and the 20th of December. Now you can see there, if you look at the top line, you'll notice the percentage split. Now that was not on any of my previous documents. So you can see there, they're prorating the new system and the old system. So the old system is 19.69% of my new system. So therefore I get paid the 71.85 pence per kilowatt hour for everything that's generated in that 19%. And then obviously for the 80.31% that's left, I don't get anything for that. Now you'll notice as well, if you drop down to the next section, um, I don't get export payments. So I've opted out of the deemed export, which was part of the, the, the fit where they just paid you 50% of what you generated as an export payment. It is much more lucrative to be on a uh, metered export using one of the, uh, the export tariffs, uh, such as the export tariff from Octopus, where I get 15 pence per kilowatt for everything that I export. Now, the important thing here is remember is my two kilowatts was on a south by southwest facing roof. And that was all I would get. That, that was what I would get paid on. Now I'm getting paid as a percentage of the whole system. And the whole system has some north by northeast facing panels. It has some panels on my garage roof that extend my generation day. So even though we're taking the same percentage, we're actually getting a larger generation day. And I fully expect that payment to be larger than it was with the old system. When somebody gives you bad advice, do what you can't. Don't just take it lying down. Don't believe that everybody who gives you advice actually knows what they're talking about. Because it turns out an awful lot of them don't. Now, if you're planning to upgrade your fit system, don't take my advice. Go do your research. I will put the document that I talked about into the description below. That will be a good starting point. But remember, do what you can't.